Jim Jenkins. Rob, if you can pull this up. When I was interviewing Jim Jenkins, I asked him a question. Uh, he was one of the four people in the room that held um, John F. Kennedy's brain. Okay, Jim mm-hmm. Jenkins. And we released this interview on, it w- could have been the one of the anniversary dates. And a video was taken down for six hours. It was trending in a very good way. And then it was came back up the next day. And I said, who out of all the people, you know, who do you think was behind it? This is a guy that's been away for 50 years. He was in the military, was in the Navy, doesn't want any attention, doesn't do any interviews, doesn't talk to anybody. Somehow, someway, we got him to feel comfortable to come and talk to us. And I had him on the, on the show. And his wife was sitting right next to me. They've been married for 50-plus years. He says, the, only per- the one man that makes me feel very uncomfortable is Lyndon Johnson, is who he said. Well, how did you come to the conclusion that Lyndon Johnson was behind the assassination of John F. Kennedy? Uh, basically, Richard Nixon told me that. Wow. He said that the Warren Commission was the biggest goddamn hoax in American history. Uh, and uh, I had uh, I'd always had my suspicions. But uh, the point here is that everybody who's analyzed the Kennedy assassination looks at it through a specific prism. So Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is right when he says the CIA is involved. Uh, others are right when they say organized crime was involved. Yet others are right when they say the FBI was involved, the Secret Service, Big Texas Oil, uh, the international banks. But Lyndon Johnson is the linchpin. He is the nexus to all of those institutions and individuals. And he is the man who has the most acute interest. Lyndon Johnson is under federal investigation in the Bobby Baker scandal and the Billy Sal Estes scandal. Robert Kennedy's begun telling people he's going to be charged. John Kennedy tells Evelyn Lincoln, his personal secretary, on his way to Dallas on the plane, Johnson is being dropped from the ticket. Johnson's a man staring into the abyss. He knows he is going to prison. Uh, Drew Pearson, the most influential columnist of the day, already has a column uh, in the can for that Sunday, the day after Kennedy's supposed to be in Dallas, nailing Johnson for taking a bribe for a general dynamics uh, defense appropriation. So Johnson has motive, means, uh, and opportunity. He's the man who insists that Kennedy go to to Dallas to bind up the wounds between the progressive and bourbon wings of the Democratic Party. He goes to Kennedy's hotel room the night before and tries to change the motorcade seating to put his hated enemy, Senator Ralph Yarbrough, in the death car with Kennedy and move his former uh, administrative assistant, Governor John Connolly, to the vice presidential car. Kennedy says, no, that defeats the whole purpose of why I'm here. I need to be seen with Connolly, the head of the more conservative wing of the party. Uh, And and in my book, I I prove using eyewitness evidence, fingerprint evidence, and deep Texas politics that Johnson uh, and all these other entities, each of whom has their own motive, the CIA, uh, about the uh, uh, the anger over the, uh, uh, the Bay of Pigs failure, the anger over Kennedy's secret deal, to uh, to remove our missiles from Turkey and Italy in the Cuban Missile Crisis, uh, big oil over the repeal of the tex- of the uh, oil depletion allowance, uh, organized crime who feels double crossed by JFK because they financed his election and they bended arms for him, broke arms for him in Chicago and in Texas in 1960, in which he wins a, a razor thin uh, victory. So everybody has a, a, their own individual interest, the banks, because Kennedy's demanding a silver back dollar. They don't want to go there. But Johnson has a unique relationship with each one of them. And I actually prove that uh, among the fingerprints found on the cardboard boxes in the crow's nest uh, is the fingerprint for a man named Malcolm Mac Wallace, uh, who was Rob, who was convicted, who was convicted uh, in 1951 of murder. That's how we have his fingerprints. Wow. He murdered uh, a man named uh, uh, Douglas uh, Kinzer. Uh, who was in a love trial with Johnson's sister and who was trying to blackmail Lyndon Johnson. Uh, He was represented at trial by Johnson's personal attorney, John Kofer, uh, and he's the only man in the history of Texas to be convicted of murder and get a suspended sentence, whereupon he then goes to work at Temco, a defense contractor owned by D.H. Byrd, one of the financiers of of, uh, Johnson's career, and the owner of the Texas School Book Depository Building. So uh, when I asked Nixon point blank after a couple cocktails, (laughs) because Nixon was very buttoned down, it was very hard to get him to talk 
you know, retrospectively about anything. He was very forward-looking. Until 9.30. Until he had a couple of uh, silver bullets, as he would call them. Yes. He had a couple of martinis, and then he got loquacious. And I said, uh, I said to him, um, so, Mr. President, let me ask you a question. Who, who really killed John Kennedy? He kind of stared into his martini, and uh, he shuddered, and he said, uh, well, Dallas. I said, I I'm sorry, sir, I don't understand. He said, uh, let me put it to you another way. Lyndon and I both wanted to be president. The difference was... I wasn't willing to kill for it. Wow. But there it is. You laid it right out. And that was really my inspiration. It took me five years to write this book, but that was really my, my inspiration for writing the book. Uh, so when Robert Kennedy says the CIA did it, he's not wrong. Uh, you, you know, when Sam Jean Conda's daughter writes a terrific book, it says that the mob did it. She's not wrong. I mean, everybody has their own interests, but Johnson has a unique relationship with each.